Yo, what's going on, guys? It is Deltray. We are back with some more Fire Emblem Fates Lunatic Conquest. Last time, we put our brother's soul to rest once and for all and got our happy ending. No one more so than Xander. God, I'm never going to be able to get this face out of my mind, man. It's just stuck there. The stuff of nightmares, I'm telling you. What's going on here? Like a little bit of a berserker's bash. Yeah, get out of here, cousin. All my wyverns are together too, what's going on? <laughs> We're gonna start off with Forrest today, cause he is the best kid ever. <laughs> I don't know about that. Not in terms of like gameplay or anything, but I really like what they did with Forrest, no lie. Before we get into that though, I did feel like, I feel like I should probably address some of the confusion that I've been seeing. So, for those of you who are confused as to why all of a sudden there's this live stream announcement for Lunatic Plus Awakening. Okay, so here, the story goes a little bit something like this. I'm an idiot. <laughs> And I underestimated the hell out of you guys and how much hype you could have for something like that. I didn't realize... <sighs> okay, well, to start from the beginning. Originally, I had put up a different video. That was sort of a... It wasn't exactly a poll. It should have been, as people mentioned. YouTube does, in fact, have a polling feature. And that's what I should have used, first of all. I wasn't thinking about it. At any rate, I put up a video asking if people wanted to see Lunatic Plus Awakening. And I vastly under <laughs> I vastly underestimated the goal. I set the bar way, way, way too low. For it to be a video of that format, of course. <sighs> I threw the video up and it just it blew up. Like ridiculous like <laughs> I keep saying like, but I'm just at a loss of words. That's the bottom line. It just exploded beyond my wildest imaginations. That wasn't that wasn't like the point of the video. The point was to Engage interest because especially for those of you who have played the lunatic plus mode in awakening You would know that it's gonna be a lot of effort no matter how we end up doing it, okay the problem was That for every person who had upvoted to say yes do this playthrough. Yes do this playthrough You know there was a there was a comment <laughs> saying not to do it so Before the video even before the video reached its goal, I just took it down because one, there was no point. It was going to hit the allotted amount. And if you guys actually saw the video, you, you can back me up here. I definitely did not. I didn't account for you guys being this awesome, I guess. Because the original benchmark was if people wanted to see me do that, it would be 300 likes by the time we finished the Fates Children Paralogs, okay? This is our first Fates Kid Paralogue. <laughs> so there was... <laughs> it was gonna be destroyed. The goal was gonna be absolutely crushed. But because there were... Almost an equal amount of vocal people against it... It certainly felt like that. I'm sure if I would've left the video up, there would've been... About 50-50 to be honest, at the rate things were going. But I digress. Bottom line, I definitely underestimated you guys in a huge way in a huge way so instead of instead of just leaving the video up and having people be confused by why i was doing things the way that i am i just decided okay let's just let's just accept that we're doing this but because so many people would rather see me play awakening in a different way let's live stream lunatic plus in combination with the awakening playthrough which will be the next playthrough and I did actually sit down and play a little bit so that I could decide what mode I wanted to do. And I decided, so that is all sorted out. It can't be overstated just how crazy you guys are with the support sometimes. Honestly, it is... It blows my mind. And you would think that I would have a better grasp on this by now. But I... I really don't. Because when... When stuff like that happens... It reminds me that... You guys are far more invested in this sort of thing than any channel with this amount of subscribers rightly should be. The amount of... The amount of effort and heart you guys were pouring out for that video was not... It was not becoming of a channel this size. It was much, much closer to something that I would expect from a channel with like 15, 20,000 subscribers. And I know, I know, YouTube politicking, but I want to make this point because... I want you guys to know that I'm not bullshitting you when I thank you for the love and support you guys show. I understand that this is sort of an anomaly of some kind. Every single video that I post, you guys just absolutely demolish it and it's just... It's never something I'm going to be able to fully grasp, I guess. 
in the future though I know to be much more careful. As for other comments, I did want to thank you guys who were telling me about how the chapter 27 and trap mechanics actually work. So best I can tell based on what you guys were saying is that it works a little bit something like this. The four units that will be entrapped tend to be your four strongest characters and I believe the determining factor for that will be their defenses. So your four beefiest characters are the ones who will get entrapped. But not only that, the only characters that can be entrapped have to be in the main hallway. That same hallway with uh, that group of merchants and soldiers that kind of rush down the- I guess we didn't see that did we, huh? Well trust me, that, that plus shaped group of merchants, right? In the main hallway, they, they rush you at the beginning of the map. And the only characters that will be entrapped are those who are in that hallway. If you are in the side hallways leading into the other rooms, you are safe from the entrapped staff. And the big one that you guys told me is that a unit will not be attacked on the same turn that they are entrapped. So using all of that together, you can probably come up with something pretty reliable. I, th I think I saw somebody say that they found out a way to do it in like three turns every time. So don't think that if you don't have the rescue staff, you're somehow screwed. There are alternatives. It's just <laughs> I didn't, I don't particularly like that map because I was never able to piece all that stuff together for myself. So thank you to the people that brought that up. And also since I did see somebody asking what the deal is with the credits on the in the beginning of the game, right? Where it says that the original story for this game was written by somebody. I'm sorry, I can't remember their name right off the top of my head. But it says very specifically the original story was written by so and so, implying that this is not the original story. And that is actually true. That is actually true. Uh, the story for this game is based on a draft of somebody else's work. I, I did actually see that for myself when I was looking some stuff up based on the things that you guys had said in a previous video. Uh, but the gist is that this guy basically wrote up a 500 plus page uh, story that sort of outlined everything that would happen in Bates, and it was it was a full-fledged thing. That's where we get a lot of the characterization for some of these people, uh, basic plot points, etc, etc, but as you can very plainly see by the end product, not all of it was used. Not all of it was used, and I'm, I'm guessing that a lot of the things that weren't used were things like Lilith and Corrin's relationship, things like that, you know, the finer details, basically. The finer details because the final product seems to be more about the main point less less about the journey more about the destination if that makes sense and i have a hard time believing that anybody can come up with 500 pages of this you know what i mean so it's pretty clear that there was some heavy liberties taken with this person's original work and it almost kind of makes you want to read the original draft you know what i mean just to see what changed I can only imagine how much more fleshed out things would be, you know? But, we're just gonna jump right in, starting off with Leo. And not Leo, we're gonna start off with your boy Forrest. And I already figured out just about what I want to try and do here. We still have all that money from the end of Chapter 26, as well as selling off those S-Rank weapons. We have everybody all toniced up. I believe we went with Speed and Magic from the Mess Hall. Yeah. And we happen to get resistance on top of that. I don't know if that really makes a difference, but that's what Perry did for me today, so uh, we are going to take it. You have arrived. Yes, I have. I would also like to buy one Seraph Robe, one Draco Shield. Because I'm just going to say, I'm going to say screw it, and we're just going to pump the hell out of Leo. This is his map, man. He's got to save his kid. He's got to save his kid. So we're gonna do like that, and now he's super, super fat. 59, well, 59, I wish. 49 HP, 32, 32 defenses. Jesus, kid. Jesus. I mean, Camilla has really stupid fizz death. Same with Percy. But 49, 32, 32. That's... <laughs> that's crazy. And Life Taker on top of that. We're never gonna have to heal this guy, basically. He does have an elixir in case everything goes left. Or at least that's the plan, but... Shouldn't really matter too much. And as you saw, we still have about 10,000 gold to play around with for the future paralogs as well. So we're not really hurting for cash. <laughs> Certainly not. Now, the group heads out to visit Leo's son, Forrest. However, Leo seems to be dragging his feet. When the group is attacked by bandits, they learn why Leo was acting that way. Because for once, Leo is going to just be a giant prick. Well, I say for once. Okay, Leo's a smartass, but he's not a prick. Today, he's going to be a prick. <laughs> 
It's an important distinction. It's a small one, but it's there. I'm so excited to meet Forrest. It's weird to think that I have a nephew, and that he's all grown up, almost as if Deep Realms are bullshit. I haven't seen Forrest since he was barely out of his crib. What's he like now? He's a troubadour, right? Think he wants to join us? The more the merrier. No. no. And, uh, let's cancel this trip. We can go to his Deep Realm some other day. What? What? Cancel the trip? But I've looked forward to seeing Forrest, and you haven't visited him in forever. Don't you miss your son? Not really. My Lord Leo? Ah, oh, my Lord Leo. Urgent news. The town just ahead is being swarmed by brigands. They also say that a beautiful woman was caught in all the fracas. But she's apparently a troubadour and is doing her best to treat the wounded. No. No, this can't be. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what, uh -oh, what now? Oh, gee, at least, come on. <laughs> I'm doing my thing. You're as pale as a ghost. <sighs> we need to get there before. Before. Let's just get there fast. Whatever could be the problem, Leo. Hmm. That's that. Well, that's that. I must have healed a dozen villagers. I'd better keep looking for more wounded. Those brigands. Mindless beasts. <gasps> ah, that must be the troubadour we heard about. She's as beautiful as they say. Don't you agree, Leo? <laughs> Big brother. Big brother. Come on. What's wrong? Father. Father, you're here. Hmm? Hmm? What do you mean, father? You mistake us for someone else. I mean, unless... Ha! Unless my brother has... <laughs> God damn it, at least. No. Only one kid for dude. That's how this works. Unless your name is dude, and then I guess you can have two kids. You know what? Forget it. <laughs> unless my brother here has been hiding a secret child. Uh, don't be crass, Elise. Father? Father, what does she mean? Has the cat got your tongue? Hmm? I'll introduce myself then. Delighted to make your acquaintance. Aunt Elise, I'm Forrest. What? What? You're Leo's son? Of course. Of course. The one and only. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You're... You're beautiful. <laughs> you're better than I could have ever imagined. And your sense of style is... Is... It's exquisite. Why, thank you. Why, thank you. 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 What are you doing outside the deep room? <laughs> I heard that this village is a fine place to shop for sewing supplies. My village has an abominable selection. One cannot make fashion from burlap. But soon as I arrived, brigands came crawling out of the woodwork. Fortunate for the villagers here, I came just in time to heal their wounded. You're a disgrace. You're a disgrace. Oh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, excuse me. Since when is saving lives considered a disgrace? <sighs> you know what I mean, Forrest. You, the way you dress. I've told you before. <sighs> but never so cruelly. Why are you being so hateful? In front of Aunt Elise, too. <clears throat> I think he has the accessory shop music as his theme here, doesn't he? That's, <laughs> that, that's me fitting, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Leo, what's wrong with you? Embrace our lovely forest. No. <laughs> no. And hold your tongue, Elise. This isn't your business. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry that I ever left my deep realm. I'll go back to where I'm appreciated. <sighs> well, then, Godspeed. But hold on, Forrest. Watch where you're... You're running straight for... Danger. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it, Forrest. So I can only assume... That people who say Fates never does anything correctly with the story haven't actually got Forrest because that scene was very real, was it not? Forrest is like a good guy. Seriously, because think about it, the only thing, the only thing about him is just that he happens to be a crossdresser. Like, that's the only outstanding thing about his whole, like, everything really. Other than that, he's just, he's a good guy. And yet, Leo is so hung up on this one fact that all of his good deeds go totally unnoticed. Everything that this kid is capable of goes totally unnoticed. Leo outright hates this kid. Hates him. Y you saw, he, he clearly has a huge issue with this. And I doubt it would stop, even if he dressed more normally, I guess. It's just incredible to me that this is even in a Nintendo game, <laughs> you know what I mean? This is, this is bonkers. If you would have told me that Fire Emblem Fates on a Nintendo console, yeah, both of those things combined. Not only is this Fates, but it's also a Nintendo console. Bottom line, if you would have told me that those two things combined could produce, like, some serious drama with a situation like this, I would have slapped you upside the head. <laughs> but here we are, in the year 2019, tackling prejudice in a very real way. And I feel like... <sighs> I can't necessarily relate to Forrest in all ways, 
you know, but I can I can only imagine just how much that must feel like a knife to the back, you know what I mean? To be basically humiliated like that by your own parents in front of other relatives who you never really met. That's just got to be that's got to be crushing, man. And Leo is totally in the wrong. Like 100% in the wrong. There's nothing really wrong with this kid at all. Like I say, the first thing he did was rush head first into danger. Not, not talking about this scene, but the village itself. It was under attack and he went there to heal. Because he's a troubadour, you know? So, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I just, I can't help but feel like this whole thing is handled incredibly well. And it feels like people don't necessarily credit Fates for what it gets right a lot of the time. It's really, really easy to talk about what the game did wrong. Everybody knows what the game did wrong. There's no surprises there, you know? How much effort does it take to say, oh, this scene was dumb? None. <laughs> because a lot of the scenes are like that, and I, I've admitted that since the start. But to just say there was nothing good about this game, even in terms of story, is just... It's incorrect, in my opinion. Something like this, I, if the whole game would have had as much weight and drama as the whole Forest Leo thing, because that is real drama. That's real drama. I don't know, man, I guess you could say a broken clock is right twice a day. But I'm gonna say kudos to the Fates writers for pulling this off. Because this could have been so much worse. You know, this could have been so much worse. This could have been so overly stereotypical. It could have been played up as a joke, but it's not. It's taken seriously, treated seriously. And the game makes no effort to hide the fact that Leo is in the wrong. And that's what makes it so cool to me. No, get your paws off me. <laughs> well, hello, young miss. What's a lady like you doing in this pigsty? <laughs> How about I be a gentleman and put you somewhere nice and safe? Wouldn't want a pretty little thing like you to get hurt. You're gonna be very disappointed, dude. <laughs> Let's get her, boys. She'll fetch a king's ransom in gold. I guess this would be the reason not to dress the way he does. This would be the one reason, because if, if you happen to be accosted by bandits, <laughs> then that's probably not too good. And now this- oh, wait, wait, that's not- <laughs> And now this too. Stop! Stop, Forrest, we're coming! <sighs> Leo, stop being a jerk and help me save your son! Alright! Alright, then I guess it's up to the rest of us to rescue my nephew. If I'm gonna nitpick something, if I'm gonna nitpick one thing, it's that I wish that instead of Leo being forced deployed on this map, he was forced to the bench. And then he would show up as a reinforcement. I think that might, you know, just add a little bit more of that gameplay story integration thing, you know? That would have been a cool little touch, but it's not as if that somehow invalidates everything else, you know what I mean? Everybody who's already in needs to be there, so. We have Dude and Leo. Leo is gonna be putting the world on his back, most likely, because he's gotta he's gotta be doing a lot of baiting here because this is a route map. This is a route map, so we need to be very selective with how we pull our enemies, and we need we need to make sure that we're not biting off more than we can chew. Because he's so tanky right now, I believe that no matter how many times he gets hit, he'll be able to do what I need him to do and stay healthy enough thanks to Life Taker. If he doesn't have all of this, then he would need to rely on a dodge, but I think that the way this works out is that he should survive no matter what, unlike two or three. Just my mental math tells me. Uh, Elise, she's got the horse spirit because she's gonna be tanking with Camilla for a little bit. Which sounds crazy because it's Elise, but believe me, this Melee Knight Elise thing, whoa. This worked out great. Because seriously, I've seen people have like, nine defense Elise <laughs> because she's usually a strategist for most people. But this just works out so much better for taking advantage of her ability, I feel, because now she can actually take a hit or two on the front line. But like I say, the horse spirit is very important for that. Camilla here. <laughs> what do I need to say? What do you think she's here for? <laughs> uh, Mozu is Mozu. We're bringing back Ophelia. She's still got the Levin Sword. Like I say, we reverted that. Save. I did still grab the Shadow Yado because you can, and it's just a strict upgrade for Gord. But we got that Levin Sword. And by the way, my... <laughs> Because I saw this, I saw this comment on the part that I forged this up, okay. A few times, in fact. Saying, well, what's the deal with the Levin Sword? Why is that such a big deal? My deal is that, it, well, first of all, like I said, it doesn't bother me. I understand why they changed this one specifically. It's because it fits better with the theme of the rest of the names. And I, I did say that, in fairness. The reason that I don't get the change, though, is because 
If you don't already know that this is still pronounced Levin, you would say it Lewin. And to an English speaker, L-E-V-I-N is much clearer, I guess? So, I don't know, when I, when I see localizations, I think that it's important to consider your audience. Is kind of the thing, because like, if you, if you look at a game like Phoenix Wright, I guess, that's a game with a fantastic localization, because it's a game that's very text heavy, and it's a game that involves a lot of jokes. Well, a lot of the jokes don't work if you translate them brute force. So they, they make sure that an English speaking audience can get the same amount of enjoyment. They, they make sure that they understand the same thing. And, and I, this is so nitpicky, okay? I'm not gonna be the pronunciation police. That's not what's happening here. I just thought it was very strange that the name would be changed in a way that is less clear, is all. It's perfectly fine. Laszlo's actually gonna do work with no pair up, so there's always that. <laughs> a gin is gin. That rally, man. Silas, I gave him a Javelin Forge, so he's gonna be able to do some attack stance stuff with Dude. And just better attack stance stuff in general, because we'll be using that a lot on this map because it is a route map. Which means we don't want to necessarily be paired up all that much. Uh, just so that we can have more bodies to kill people with, basically. Uh, Dwyer is here because... <laughs> who else, really? I, I kind of do want some amount of healing, because again, we are forced to defeat every enemy. And it's not really reasonable to expect to get by without some amount of healing. And Percy is the GOAT. Now, we have plenty of my favorite enemy type in the whole wide world, goddammit! <laughs> by the way, I didn't forget about the comments on that treason video. The endgame video was just very, very long. So I didn't want to go through as many comments as usual. Hopefully you'll understand, but I didn't forget a lot of the things that people said, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, these Berserkers are pretty scary though, because they can just kill you regardless of skill. I think we've already kind of covered that. Lots of mages as well. Lots of mixed damage groups. What do I mean? I mean groups with both physical and magical damage. Which makes it much harder to tank if you're not very selective with how you do things. Of course, generals by this point just have Worry Fighter as a standard, so no doubling to be had there. The heroes themselves aren't really too scary, they're not really all that. We have plenty of sword breakers, and dude just destroys them. I think she's probably gonna be the one to pull these two guys, more likely than not. Some paladins up here, but they don't actually move on the first turn no matter what, which we'll see in a second. We also have Forrest up here, who is totally helpless for the time being. Now what I really would have liked is to get move plus one on next somehow before this point, but it's not really, it's not really like that. The goal here is to save Forrest. Which we'll see in a second, because he's not in any danger just yet, but he will be. And then over here we have the boss, Arthur, who looks suspiciously like Gazak, I might add. You know, our parabot extraordinaire, Gazak? Yeah, that guy. So Arthur here... <laughs> God damn it. Okay, in all seriousness, if you, if you didn't see the map where we recruited Percy, okay. The game actually specifically calls attention to how much Gazak and Arthur look alike. And I never realized that before that point. Tell me you can't see it though. Come on now. They could be twins. <laughs> a lot of people like to capture this guy because he's a free berserker with capped strength. Like, look at that. Look at that. 40 strength. By default. Really beefy too. He's actually got 64 HP right there. Decent enough durability. You don't really want to let him take magic attacks, obviously. The only thing really holding this guy back as a capture is his piss poor luck. And all Berserkers inherently take a crit evade penalty as is. So this guy is just asking to be wrecked by that sort of thing. If you can put up with that though, he's very... Very good. <laughs> he's definitely a very good pick for a captured unit, I would say. He also has good fortune, for some reason, certain blow, which is kind of nice because axes aren't all that accurate. And since he has very bad luck, his hit rates could use the help. Certain blow will ensure that he basically always hits on player phase though. And if you get some of the crazier plus crit items, like I believe the Great Club it's called, uh, you can make some good use of this. Because weapons like that are very inaccurate inherently. He also has, what is that, Pavis? And in this chest is 5,000 gold, we will not be getting it. Actually, you know what, no, no I'm not, because you know what? I really want a unit who doesn't suck having lock touch for once. So I think we'll just let Forrest have that. Now what we want to do here, is pair ourselves up accordingly. We're gonna try to break down that wall on the first turn. 
but I don't want to leave Camilla out there by herself because it could be very dangerous if we did. So we need to make sure she has plenty of support here. Plenty of support. Something like that should be just fine. Yeah, we can go there. And I want to say this should get it done. This right here should be the way. Hmm. hmm. These dastards may intend to get Forrest safe for ransom. But if hard pressed, such brutal apes wouldn't think twice about killing him. We should try to keep the peace as long as possible until we get in your forest. Nah. <laughs> the enemy will send someone out to finish off Forrest as soon as you engage foes, or vice versa. So get as close to Forrest as you can before your first fight. Alright. That should be close enough. <laughs> what, you thought we were gonna play stealthy? No, no, no. I hated that gimmick in Path of Radiance. You think I wanna do it here? No, not gonna happen. So we're gonna start with something like that. Rally on up with your boy Jin. Get the animations back on for old time's sake, I suppose. Camilla's gonna throw here and break down this wall. Of course, there's so many mages in there that this is a very bad look unless we do something about that, which is exactly why Leslow's gonna be bringing up the rear. We're gonna dance for him right now. And by standing next to Camilla like this, he's actually just strong enough to be able to retaliate and kill any any kind of mage with his stronger pose, the Rose's Thorn, and the La Average, which I, I don't think I actually showed myself forging that, but I did forge it back on Iago's map because I thought that Laszlo would be doing more. And then I rethought it a little bit, which, I mean, obviously, right? If your plan is to use Laszlo, you're probably doing something wrong to begin with, so it's no surprise that that was actually, in fact, the wrong way. Now, this is as good as time as any to bring it up, but I did see more than one or two people who mentioned the whole Bronze Axe thing back in uh, Iago's map. Now, that is true. You can use a bronze weapon to decrease the amount of critical the enemies will have on you by a flat 10. So it's more effective than the Lux stat in that sense. But my problem with that is that it ignores the bigger picture. It ignores the bigger picture when you just say, okay, you just use a bronze weapon every time you face crit. What if it's, what if it's not the correct option? What if it's not the correct option? Like right here, if I use a bronze axe so that the berserker can't grab me, then what do you think these mages would do to Camilla? They would destroy her, obviously. And I'm not, I'm not like riding on people who brought up the bronze axe thing. I know you guys are just trying to help, and what I, I, I didn't, I didn't explicitly explain my thought process on that, 100%. So I can't really blame people for just saying use a bronze axe. But if I use a bronze axe right here, I've actually increased the chance that I failed this map significantly because these mages could dogpile Camilla and she would get wrecked no questions asked but because I had the dual club instead I can afford to do this because the mages have such bad accuracy however that does mean that there's a chance that despite the fact that I planned all of that out used my noodle you know use the old brain power there to figure out that this was my best move the berserker can just say no no this is actually a wrong move I have five percent chance to end you this guy actually won't kill her, but it would still be awful. So... My, my point is this. You have to think about the bigger picture in this game a lot. You can't just... You can't just... You just have to think about the bigger picture. I don't know... I don't know how else to put it than that, really, because... Nice try! Because a bronze weapon is not always a viable answer. It's not. It's the same thing with Heartseeker and the shaky hit rates in this game. Well, you because you can just say, well, if Heartseeker exists, that's minus 20 avoid. But that takes for granted all the issues that Heartseeker itself has, like the positioning aspect of it mainly. Similarly, I saw a lot of people saying just use like a hero. And I did forget about Hero Xander. That was that would be the big one that would probably work for this because I genuinely believe he is strong enough. To pull that off but <sighs> well hold that though we'll finish this nice try you raise a finger against us I'll send an axeman for our hostage besides some of you look classy enough to make for even better hostages ha get him boys no 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 we're gonna outrun that berserker by a good bit don't you worry but with the Agos map right I saw a lot of people saying you know use a use a hero obviously well, the problem with that is that Selena and Laszlo will never be killing those Berserkers. They they can't do it. The reason that Camilla can do it is because she has Trample. Those Berserkers did have Armored Blow, and Trample more or less cancels that out. 
I really do not foresee Laszlo or Selena being able to survive out there. Somebody did bring up Hero Xander, which would be the big one in that case. But they're definitely not surviving out there. They, they cannot use a sword. They cannot use a sword at all. Because I know heroes have Axe Breaker, okay. But Laszlo and Selena could never afford to use a sword there because the position that Camilla was in was able to be attacked by two generals. So, although on paper, a hero may be the hardest of counters to that room, the bigger picture dictates that they would get dropped immediately by the two generals wielding silver spheres, not to mention they're frozen in place anyways. So, chances are the Berserkers have more than a 6% hit rate on them to begin with. If they have more than a 6% hit rate, then the plan is actually worse. For reliability, anyways. Because the chance of Camilla dying in that room was 6%, you feel me? So... I guess that's the point I wanted to make. You gotta think about the bigger picture with this game a lot. A whole lot. Which is exactly why we're gonna do what we're about to do right here. We're gonna heal back Camilla. She's gonna lunge this guy right now. We already rallied her, so she should be more than capable here. And she has a full guard at this point. There's really no way that she dies here. Really no way that she dies here. Especially not when all is said and done. This guy was so utterly helpless. So utterly helpless. And good night. So down he goes. It is a little bit of a shame that Camilla is super, super capped on level like that, but she still gotta do her thing. She didn't suddenly become bad because she's maxed out. It's just that obviously we want to try to build up other characters if possible as well. Now we can switch these two on over, like so, and switch back to Elise. Now because Elise is now right next to Camilla, she's in no danger of death. And because Camilla is next to Elise and uh, Dwyer, she's essentially getting the same three damage reduction that Camilla is. So the two of them in this exact formation are totally safe. Basically. Well, I say totally safe, because the Berserkers can still kill me. But, we'll see if it comes to that or not. No, no, I'm not gonna be super salty about it. That's not, that's not the point of that. It's just that it is something that has to be taken into account, unfortunately. And there is really no better way because Camilla does need the dual club and Elise does need the horse spear. Because if they don't have those, then they will die at a much greater rate. Of course, there's always the potential for dodges, but. Also, it bears repeating. <laughs> I, I know, this will be the last one, I promise. Ophelia with max luck, 36 luck. 4% crit on her. Okay, now I'm done for sure. <laughs> I just had to get that one out there too, man. Now, Bozu can destroy this guy. Not even a question. Look at that, 25 times too, good god. Berserkers are not that bulky. It really was just that one group that all had armored blow. So for the most part, Almost anybody with a decent attacking ability can do this. Mozu with her quick draw is no exception. Now I just blow this guy away with the Lemon Sword. Oh yeah. I'm so glad I get to keep this. I really am. There's one. There's two. Good God. Ophelia is strong. I, I like how she breaks characters sometimes though. Because that just... <laughs> that little dialogue there sounds just utterly burnt out, doesn't it? Like she doesn't even want to... She doesn't even want to spend the energy on her old gimmick. She's like, oh man, I'm so tired of these battles. <laughs> I thought he crit me. Of course he hits me. Man, that blows. Guess I did it right. But because we gave dude the extra little bit of durability, she should be just fine this to still do chance. what she needs to do, especially if she's gonna proc defense like that. No need for shelter. Yeah, that sucked. But anyways, with Silas, he's gonna take the Greta Boo and throw it at this guy. As you can see, with all the tonics and crap taken into consideration, we have just enough attack to make this work. So we take him out of there. All these guys are now done. On the next turn, we're gonna repair Silas and Dude. So we can attempt to bait some of those heroes away from that choke we've got going on. Not a bad one, kid. Not a bad one. Yeah, it is such a shame, though, that all of his durability was on the back end of his levels like that. With growth units, your early levels are so, so much more important than your late ones. So, what could have been, huh? If only he had durability sooner. We're gonna put Leo right here, which 
pulls these guys in such a way that he can kill one of them on the next turn himself and get the life taker. Because I'm assuming that it's going to be him. He might not, but it would be it would be in my best interest to plan for the possibility, you know what I mean? So now let's see if we are still in this or not. It's really just gonna depend on those Zergers, honestly. It really is. Oh, or we can <laughs> Or we could dodge an 86, ruining all of my calculations. Yeah. <laughs> that works too. Okay, man. Okay, man. Okay, man! <laughs> Well, it was going to be this whole thing, but I guess not. Instead, we can just wreck him. That works for me. Now, the unfortunate part about Elise is that she is still herself. And uh, 79 times 2 is not particularly amazing. But what should happen here is the next Berserk... Okay. Do we recover from that, I wonder? Hmm. I don't know. I'm not totally sure. But we'll figure out real quick, I can tell you that much. I think we should, because I don't think Azura is doing anything important on this turn regardless. So what difference would it make if I need to attack with somebody else? If anything, I can have Dwyer... I can have Dwyer take a tome from... Elise. So I guess this is a little bit sketchy, but not really. The way that the enemies move is a little bit weird. Sometimes, I... Hmm. Oh, it's because Camilla dodged, no doubt. Yeah, because I thought that these guys had lethal on Camilla. But with her dodging like that, they probably don't anymore. I guess that's what's going on. Because in theory, they should have just all attacked her. Like every last Berserker. Which would have been better, obviously, because Elise has the chance to miss, as we saw. But I'm not entirely sure if that's really going to hurt us or not. I'm really not. We're gonna have to find a way to kill that guy though. He can't he can't be there, I don't think. Oh, I know exactly how we can do it, I think. I think. <clears throat> well anyways, Leo has more than enough health to do what I need him to do here. We just gotta clear We don't gotta clear anybody, actually, yeah. Perfect, perfect. We still have to kill these two guys, but. It's not going to be what I was fearing, basically. Uh, so we pair Mozu with... Elise... Not Elise. <laughs> Elise's kid. With Ophelia. Yeah, we pair those two right now. And she can take this general out like so. And then... Leo can move one up, one to the right, and kill the mage. Which will be in range of one berserker and one more mage. But not <laughs> the giant cluster of enemies, which is the biggest part of this. We're trying to pull them... Uh, we're, tr we're trying to divide and conquer, basically. We're, we want to pull this guy and this guy separately, which will probably trigger these guys to move, I do believe. But by taking out these two enemies, we can we can make it much safer to proceed, basically. And we need to kill that mage anyways, because I would like... I would like dude to kill those two heroes. Now, we do want to print Hilda for this, so let's go ahead and do it like so. And this will bring us all the way back to full. And even if... Uh, even if that general had hit us, we would still be able to survive this situation when all is said and done. Thanks to the insane levels of bulk that Leo has. More Speaking come. of which, like I said, the insane levels of bulk this guy has. <laughs> so there we go. Back to full. Yeah, he's got 50 HP, 32, 32 defenses. No, 30. No, it is 32, 32. Okay, but at any rate, we can take these two pair of now. This is a good spot for dude, and the reason we want Silas up here is because from the tile we're dropping him in right now, he can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and stand under the staircase. Which is going to be important because there are reinforcements. I think Camilla dodging was actually worse for us there in a way. I'm 99% confident that they would have dogpiled her if not for that. Yeah, it, it does. It does, cool. So that's great, we're gonna take that from you. You don't need that. Well, they'll be paired anyways, so what we can do is just attack right here. Like so. <laughs> Did I say Azura was doing nothing important? No, I, I'm sorry. I meant she was making the most important move of all. Jesus. Where's my brain? Because now she's going <laughs> to... Oh, yeah, that would that would have been bad. Now she's going to take Elise away from Percy, though. And then dance for Percy. Like so. Giving him yet one more move. Now rally, man. We can do this. It's gonna be pretty awesome here. Much like that level up. He's gonna move right here. 
and he's gonna take this hammer. <laughs> yeah, you remember how he has A in every weapon that matters? Oh no, he has A B B. My bad. But he has really good weapon ranks. Bottom line. In fact, he has max possible. So we're gonna move there. We're gonna rally, like so. Now, your boy Percy. Ah, oh, yeah, beautiful sight. Rally man being a combat unit once again. Go figure. But this is great for us. Because we can kill not only this general, but the general that, that will be attacking Percy on enemy phase. Which is exactly why we want to make this move. Uh, Camilla, after that rally, can take this guy out. And you want to kill this guy because he has a steel lance, whereas the other guy has a silver lance. <laughs> the implication being, because this guy cannot hurt Camilla, he will not attack her on his turn. The other guy can technically hurt her, though. If not for the shield gauge. So, this is how we want to go about this. I want to save. Me too, man. It's a little bit too easy sometimes. Now we're just gonna drop Elise back off. In the event that she needs to get secure a kill here, basically. I don't think it'll come to that, but Percy can clown this guy with the help of Rally Man. More dodging doesn't hurt, but I don't think it's necessary at all. Golly, thanks a bunch. Now I wonder if you no, know, they'll probably actually still attack Camilla because Percy has that much defense. Yeah, what did I say? He actually has more defense than her. Which is why, for what comes next, I think we're using Percy. These guys have no chance against me. None whatsoever. And they're even gonna dodge, which could be... Pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie here. I can always count on you. You know, maybe I wanted to give Dude a Lance, though. Because I'm pretty sure she doubles in one round to them, even with the poke. And that would actually reduce the damage we're taking pretty considerably. Uh, had we been getting hit, <laughs> that is... Had we been getting hit, that might have been an idea. <laughs> yeah, wow, if not for the fact that that first Berserker hit us, uh, she'd still be at full. Now, the reason this guy's so dangerous is because, again, he has that certain blow, so there's really no dodging him. Not likely, anyways. The only way you could really do that would be, like, an axe breaker sword user. So here's a situation where the heroes would be pretty nice, because there's no freeze staff to reduce the effectiveness of that. Although you'd still have to contend with these mages, and Leo is very good at that, as you can see. He's gonna be a little bit low. He's gonna be a little bit low, but we can just life take her back out of range for anything dangerous. <laughs> that was nothing. Or at least so goes my theory. I don't believe we're gonna be able to rally him or anything like that here. Maybe dude, in all honesty, wanted rally defense for this map. Because it would help Leo in this upcoming scenario. But, but nothing's gonna help this paladin. Oh my god, you are very dead. <laughs> you know, I did see a comment a few parts back saying that uh, this person hadn't really played Fire Emblem since the Game Boy Advance games. And seeing the damage numbers that you can get in this game was just so mind-blowing to them. And yeah, I can definitely see why that would be the case. Without a doubt. Did we kill an extra berserker or something? What happened? I thought there would be another guy here. Am I tripping? I must be dripping. <laughs> I, I swear there was supposed to be one more guy. But that is so much better for me. Uh, Silas needs to go right here, no matter what. This is basically inarguable. Now, we have this nice choke point over here. <sighs> I don't know, guys. If you ever wanted your wyvern in the choke point, but she was all the way over there. <laughs> because what we're gonna do is slingshot these two over into that hole. And Percy does have lunge. I, actually, we're going to lead with Percy because he has his personal. Which will basically keep him safe from being crit. On top of this forge, there's there's no way. There's no way. Now, here is a situation. Well, is it? No, I, I want to say that it's still not a situation where the bronze axe makes sense. Because if I don't use the dual club, this guy can do so much to Percy. Right? So once again, even if I can use the Bronze Axe, by choosing not to, I'm increasing my chances of not dying here. Unless I'm missing something. Because he should block one. I can kill this guy now. Block you. Hopefully. And these guys only deal a modest 10 damage to him. And in fact, he'll be blocking two hits. Not, not just one. He'll always block two hits, so... Yeah, we should be good no matter what. I guess you pair with you. Move you here. Yeah, it doesn't really matter what Dwyer is doing. Not like that. So we do one of these. 
And I should actually even be able to unpair here. Unpair Dwyer, that is, which is probably preferred so that that way on the next turn I can heal. So yeah, we'll do exactly that. We'll dance for Percy, who can now make it to that choke point. We will take Dwyer away with Rally Man, and then Rally hitting... Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> hitting all of those people. And now, well, at least we just drop off Dwyer. And he should be in range to Physic on the next turn if need be. Yeah, he couldn't have physic on this turn. Any well, he could have physic dude, I guess. But he couldn't have really done anything meaningful here. Oh, wow. That's not good. <laughs> well, crap. I thought... I thought there would be a guy right here. Maybe I killed one too many. Or something. Because had there been a guy right there, I would have been lunging his ass right now. Uh, <laughs> I think we can actually... We have alternatives here, though. Hmm, we gotta think a little bit on the fly, though. Hold on. Okay, so here's how this plays out in my head, right? Percy lunges this guy. How much does he do with the dual club, do you think? Probably not a whole lot. Because we'd be at disadvantage. Yeah, we'd definitely be at disadvantage. I don't know if I can necessarily risk that, but... Hmm. How much do I do with even the forge? Then I guess would be the first question. 22, so if I... And you do... No! Well, <laughs> uh-oh, <laughs> that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, no. I really didn't want to wait in place, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. Can't really say anything about that other than, uh, whoops, because we're going to die. We're going to die very, very badly. I have no doubt. This will probably hit for good measure. No. Well. Well, well, well. So there's one thing going our way, I guess. But Mozu's dead, so it's not as if that somehow matters. <laughs> Unless the bad AI really comes through that hard. I'm not really counting on it, though. I guess she could dodge a tomahawk. That would be like the one way she lives here. <laughs> dodge, 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 dodge. <laughs> No way. No way. I don't I don't deserve that. I don't deserve that. Not after two misclicks in a row. Come on, this better hit at least. Dodge. Okay. <laughs> not strong. We'll be back. And this time I'll try not to have butterfingers, I guess. Jesus Christ. Talk about a throw. Cause I I saw the way to come back from that. I think I might have even explained how, but basically Percy lunged the the uh, armor knight. Dude lunged the northern, uh, the northern swords were blocking the two generals that were guarding the door from attacking, uh, the southern group, basically. Leo would kill the other mage, getting life taker. Mozu would take Ophelia from Leo and kill the general, who would then be in position to be hit over the wall. And the only people that could have attacked Ophelia, first of all, she would get a block, so there's no way that there was enough enemies down there to kill her. But... <sighs> the only people that could have attacked were one mage and one berserker, basically. So she would have survived, and I think that that's, <laughs> that would have worked. That should have worked. And I do imagine that they would have want for a tomahawk on Ophelia over just dogpiling Percy because... Ophelia had no defense, and Percy takes like 8 to 10 from those guys. Barring the mage, of course. Well, and if that wasn't bad enough, I totally saw how I could have gotten Percy into the choke point, by the way. I could have just had Camilla in the lead, because she had 10 moves. So, all kinds of failures, really.
Oh my god, I can't believe I did the math as if dude wouldn't kill some- What's wrong with me? Yeah, this time there's a guy here. Oh no, it is the same four berserkers though, huh? He just moved a little bit differently. Well, that's on me for not paying more attention to that. Most definitely. Uh, regardless, we can do exactly as we had intended to, basically. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't really see what's stopping me. I'm just, I'm just really paranoid right now. Like I said, we're gonna move style this way here, though, for the sake of blocking four reinforcements. I think it's two heroes, two sorcerers. Not really trying to do that, if you don't mind, so, uh, <laughs> here we are. In case you're wondering why I had Percy in the lead to begin with, it's because I wanted to hit him with Inspiring Song. Just to increase his evasion a little bit. Not that I'm really counting on that, but every little bit helps as far as I'm concerned. It also makes it less likely for him to miss because of the skill boost. So I guess that's on me though for getting greedy, really. <laughs> I can't really blame the game for that, obviously. But this time we can actually proceed as intended. And he's gonna have the dual club. Yeah. Yeah! One of these should be just fine. So we sing on up for him. Rally Man can once again set up to drop off Dwyer. Hopefully we don't have fat fingers this time and click the correct buttons <laughs> that we need to click. Transfer now. Nothing else. Separate. And no other button. Cool. So we're gonna block this first hit. It would be nice if Percy had Savage Blow here, but we don't. Sadly so. Not a whole lot I can do about that, really. Once again, though, I can use Dude to block in the area by, like, well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah, the dual club part, though, that seems very safe. Unless we miss a 94! Well, I guess we're gonna improvise again. God, how I love the RNG in this game. I really just do. It's so goddamn good. <laughs> can you feel the sarcasm? Uh, I mean, Mozu can still kill that guy. I mean, I th actually, no, she can't. I think she has to kill this guy now. Right? And we have to hope like hell that 38... <sighs> yeah, I think we just straight up have to hope that that's enough somehow. Or I can just try to eat a hit from the general. Actually, does Mozu even die? In all honesty. 38. 35, though. I mean... I wish 35. 45. No. No, I don't think she does. Now that is the Silver Spear. But it's even... Okay, so he's gonna be weaker than that. So... I can't believe that crap, man. Yeah, this is, this is where we're at, I think. We do that with Mozu. Take him out. That's the safest spot for her to be. My only fear now is that I think Dude might be in danger. I don't know how smart the game is. We're gonna find out really quickly. Who has the better shot here, I guess? 32, 32. That's only 11, but he'll do actually 15 in reality, right? Could I use the gate to kill this guy? Probably not. That was the issue, I believe. Yeah, we can't kill that guy. And of everybody who we want to think about here, the mages are definitely my highest consideration. 17, 17, 17 is probably death. But 16, 16, 16 is also death, so that's no good, is it? <sighs> Unless we put Leo here. Yeah, if we put Leo over there. And this guy will attack Mozu from inside Elise's range, actually. So that's one good thing to come out of it. Okay, yeah, I see how we do this. I see how we do this. Okay, so we still need to one-shot this guy. Like, that part is... It's the safest thing we can do. Make goddamn sure we're lunging. I should still have Savage Blow on as well, which doesn't help us right now, but it will help next turn. For that guy. Now, Leo has to be right here. He must be right here. No other tile. Lightning's not enough to take you out, so we just use the Brin Hilder and pop our gauge. This guy can do a hell of a lot, but he's gonna do more to Mozu. And I'm not sure if that part really matters explicitly, but I do want the help. If at all possible. 
Oh my god, is this one of those rare situations where you can actually come back from a miss? Oh my god, it just might be. It just might be, because I don't believe anybody is in danger here. I don't believe for a second. Why did she do it KO with a Yato? <laughs> what? That wouldn't have killed. I'm so sure. And with a miss. Okay, a little bit of justice, it seems. And Percy is himself. Oh my god, so much justice. What a great game. <laughs> and Percy is himself, though, so he can't be crit. He's one of the very few people that can say that at all. There's no chance of him being crit. We do not need the hand axe at this point. No, I'll hold on to the door key. Maybe somebody less important can take that. Only one Zerger should live, and they are very easy to knock out at this point. Goodbye. I told you they're easy to kill. <laughs> now, I wonder... Yeah, there's going to be four more mages that spawn in there, by the way, which is why time is sort of a factor. You don't want to be fighting these four mages as well as these four heroes. That's just no good. Now, I believe that they actually operate on trigger lines, not on... Uh, not on time, so if I get up into this area, then the heroes group will spawn. If I get into this area, then the mages group will spawn. So I, I think you can take as much time as you want, but don't quote me on that. Do not quote me on that. I should still have the lightning? Yeah, I do. But that's a bit of a risk now, isn't it? I'd almost like to put somebody next to her just so that she gets the attack stance bonus, but if I do that, then there's nowhere for Azur to go. Oh, I do have the hammer on rally. Oh, man. Here's a play. Here's a play. Oh, <laughs> nice. Nice. Because slow and rally man weren't doing anything on this turn anyways. They're just too far away. But now Elise can actually take this guy out on her way through. With the bull tax. 98%. Oh, my God. The plays. The plays. <laughs> oh, man. That's good stuff. So sometimes I guess it's fun when things go left like that. If not for missing, none of this would have happened, I assure you. Well, that's kind of interesting, I gotta say. Dance for Elise, though, we can get her in on all this. Now, if I just simply say Camilla, I probably still double and destroy these guys. Easily. But Percy has so much luck that, oh no, these guys actually do have a chance, unless I use the Forge, in which case they really don't have a chance. I'll probably take the hit, though, that way. And all we really gotta do is not throw right here. So how do we best use these characters? I guess would be the question. I just want to minimize the risk from this crit, that's basically all that I'm worried about right now. Uh... Oh, but of course, if we use the Forge. Now, see, this is a situation where this works as long as I switch... Oh, no, he doesn't have enough. He's not strong enough. So, I guess it's not a situation where that works. Huh. Unless I take Camilla, I guess, but then I don't get the dual attack, so never mind. How many kills do we have here? Or actually, wait, 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 wait. Isn't leaving the general alive the actual move? Like, only the general surviving is what we want, I think. I think so. Because, like, really, what does he do? What does he do by himself? You know? And it won't even matter at that point if... I mean, this is the spear guy, but he doesn't do 21 to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is... Yeah, final answer. Uh, so we equip with you the armor slayer. For the sake of Silas coming through, like, now, throw the Gratavu over her shoulder. That kills you. Oh, right, animations can come back. Like so. Dude kills you. We could even lunge onto the pillar if we wanted to. Ah, uh, but this is this is safe, though. If we grim Yato with you. Shadow Yato, even. And then use Elise to attack stance with Dude. That's way better. And it also increases their accuracy. So yeah, that's how we do that. And it even gives Savage Blow to a few of the more annoying targets, I want to say. So this is our best possible move. This is our best possible move. I should have traded off the javelin because I've already missed a goddamn whatever that was, a 94, I believe. There's max level for dude, which is actually pretty nice because she should pick up more defense for one. And for two, that's going to give her defender, which is a good ability, but we don't need it here. There we go, get the blow and lunge. Now we can sneak right in here, and that's way better. We can actually finish this guy off with no chance of missing before he even gets a chance to do damage, which is going to keep Elise plenty healthy. I want to say. 
So yeah, here we go. And if, if the general is the only one left alive, like I say, they can't do anything. Not by themselves. It's going to be the general Gazak and those two paladins outside along with one berserker. Which is nothing at this point. Nothing at this point. So Mozu... I mean, this is still super sketch, I won't lie. Is there any way at all? No, it, ha it quite literally has to be that because as you can see... As you can see, we'll fail to kill if not for that. Alternatively... No, the chance of that is just much too high. It's just much too high, I'm afraid. Mozu's our best bet. Uh, 28 plus 13, we already said it's no kill. So it has to be the Iron Bow. It must be the Iron Bow. And we must roll this 7%er. No other alternative, man! We gotta do it! It's fine. We're the ones who are about to crit it back. Watch. Okay, that's fine. I don't care about her health. She's not in range for anybody to deal damage. She survives the combo. And she cannot miss. So now we're pretty much golden. Because Leo can swing through. He's got Heartseeker, which should buff him to the point that there's no possible way to fail. No possible way. Yep, there we go. And even if we somehow miss this Berserker as well, which I don't think we can because I'm about to use a better weapon, <laughs> but even if we did somehow miss, he would still not be able to reach Mozu with the Tomahawk, who would be the only one in danger, especially once Leo gets this nice plus 25. Thank you. That's going to be such a sick combo. Yeah, and since he has the Tomahawk, this guy actually can't dodge to begin with. Everybody else is too far out of range. So this is looking very good for me. Very, very good for me. Now, I wonder how close... I wonder how close Dwyer is. Because it might be possible to get, like, a really cheeky move going here. Because we'd be able to end this on the next turn if we can somehow be in this guy's range. With, like, some, anybody, really. Anybody that can kill him. These guys aren't really a huge threat. They would be if not for the fact that most of my characters are mounted. And they do have trample, so that's the biggest concern with that. Actually, yeah, this will probably work out, huh? I should think. Silas cannot die. It's impossible. And we're actually doing some decent damage here, to be honest. Yeah, almost anybody can kill that guy. And we only really need two people to handle Gazak. I want to say... Yes. Hell, maybe dude can just do it by herself. Of course, there is always the chance. There is always the chance we still lose. But not if I switch to Ophelia, right? I mean, this is always the play just because we'll block. We still have more than enough people in reserve, so whatever, really. He can't 1% me, thank God. I don't care who you are, this village is mine, and anyone in it too! Boy, that is Ophelia. There's one. Can't be hit. Get him. There we go. Oh, come on. I thought it said Pavis, not Miracle. What's going on? Why is he still alive? I can't believe he lived Ophelia. <laughs> what? That's possible? She's one tile away. So all we need to do... Give her the old orgy. Like so. Uh, transfer Camilla on over as well. Yeah. Final answer. I'm just gonna leave, uh, I'm gonna leave these two to deal with Gizak, honestly. Uh, now. I wanna say that I can actually reach over here. Uh, yeah, and I can rally do, which is great. That's what we wanna do. So we'll take this guy out with the heavy metal. He doesn't have Pavis or anything, so this is completely safe. And once I rally Elise, she's going to be tanky enough to survive now the two paladins. Do it as well. And she has enough movement to sneak in there, basically. So we're going to go like so. Rally on up. Pair Azura with Mozu, who is done for the map. We can hit this door. And the auto does actually give 10 crit avoids, so... Like a flat 10. So again, it's better than luck. And we can just do like this. Use the concoction, which is going to keep us safe no matter what. And Elise can sneak right in here with the... With the bolt axe. Now, if only Hazura had a weapon, huh? <laughs> well, we're still getting 10 extra hit. What are our hit rates like? Pretty decent, I would... Uh, oh, I guess not. I guess not pretty decent. Help. 
Send help. Either way, we can do like that. <laughs> what can I really do at this point? Other than not be unlucky. So he's gonna get a good amount of HP back thanks to that good fortune. Can somebody please explain to me why dude almost one-shots this berserker? <laughs> what? Life or death not needed! Life or death not needed! Good god! Yeah, 153. Have fun with that. Just another day in the life for strength, Thorn, I guess. Alright, so we should do pretty okay here. Oh, he must have been on some kind of terrain. No wonder. Yeah, I thought it should have been more like 80. 80 something. Yeah, that's more like what I was. That's more like what I was expecting, basically. And assuming Gazak gets popped by Ophelia and doesn't one percent me, now he will probably hit thanks to a certain blow, but he can't one shot me without a crit. Not bad. Yeah, you really. I can't believe how tanky she is, Gazak. You coward. Really? <laughs> no, I just want to add that extra turn. Screw you. I hate this guy. Man, I should have just heart secret him. Why didn't I just heart secret him? I'm so bad. I'm so bad. Well, I tire of this. I probably should have just killed him with Leo at this point, honestly. Seems like it's kind of his map. Yeah, we're not capping this guy. I don't feel that we need him at this point. He is quite good, though, like I say. Nah, he, you bunch of filthy curs. I took this place fair and square. Sure you did, bud. That's what they all say. Turn seven and not six, huh? Camilla and Laszlo. Pretty fun map, though, despite being a route map. Blocking those reinforcements was pretty key in that. I guess I'm gonna be glad having the practice on route maps like this, though, right? <sighs> not a bad map, though, definitely not. There's lots of different things you can do, and even for somebody like me. Because I, I know people think, oh man, all this guy does is rush. No, not all I do is rush. Did we or did we not take up some defensive positions there? That's all we were doing, really. That was the most defensive aggression I've ever <laughs> really done. And that's what kind of makes that map cool, in my opinion. Lots of different choke points that you can take advantage of, but you can also still make progress while doing it. And that's what makes it... That's what makes it stand out to me. You know, you're not just stuck turtling because there's choke points. Not on a map like that. Some other maps don't lend themselves as well to that sort of thing. But we were basically kiting them for the entire map. If that wasn't apparent. We were cutting them off from their most advantageous positions as we proceeded throughout the fort. And... It paid off. It paid off. Because we really did need to do that. We had to divide them up because there's nobody that I have. And I really doubt that there's anybody that anybody has who can really stand up to that many enemies at the same time. So it's instrumental to make sure that you're not biting off more than you can chew. Especially with their formations as dense as they were in that map. You saw that on the first turn we broke down the wall. And that was so that by the time group number two pushed into the fortress through the middle... There wouldn't be a million enemies waiting there to greet them. So that's what I'm saying. It's it's the big picture. It's the big picture. You gotta think more than one turn. Uh, you gotta think about more than just the current turn. So if I'm if I'm not thinking one turn ahead, then you can see how much worse a map like that would be because I wouldn't be clearing out any of the enemies. If I'm not killing any of the enemies, then I'm getting swarmed. And although that might be fine on this map, you could kite them around and around in circles if you wanted to once you break down that wall. Uh, provided that you save for it somehow, which you can do with a rescue step or by entrapping the Berserker at the beginning of the map because he's the only one that will spawn. He has a door key and he needs that in order to... No, he doesn't have a door key, excuse me. He has lock touch though. And he needs that in order to get into Forest Room. But he's the only enemy on the map with lock touch. So if you entrap him and kill him, then you have as much time as you want, basically. Ah, what a shame, Father. To meet all your brave friends and now say farewell. But I'll make good on my promise to head back to my deep realm. Don't think for one moment that I'm leaving to spare your feelings. You're unworthy of me, father. I'll miss Aunt Elise, of course, but I'm sure that she will visit. And so, farewell. Forrest. Please, wait! Please wait, Forrest, is it? You may not remember, but you saved me. As I lay dying, there you were, and then I was fine. I don't have much, but please take this. Just a small token of my appreciation. Why, thank you. Why, thank you. This brooch is beautiful, but I can't take this. I was only doing my duty. Uh-huh, uh -huh. yes you will. My whole family would have been dead without you. Wait right here, I'll get him. And a lot of other people who want to thank you. <laughs> Come on, Leo. Nice trinket you got there. I mean, 
uh, I mean, <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> Leo would be that kind of dad, huh? The one that just really has no idea what to say. Like the kind who wants to take an interest in their kids' hobbies but has no idea what they're doing. Oh, son, is this what you kids call the anime? It's not an anime, Dad. It's a hardcore tactical strategy RPG. <laughs> I, he's, he's trying for us. Come on. He's trying. <laughs> Sorry, I can be a bit of a jerk, as Elise so bluntly puts it. That is, indeed a lovely keepsake the villager gave to you. And you are the hero here. We... I merely blundered in late. Oh? Oh? Well, Father, I know it must agonize you to say something nice to me. I'll take your words with me as a keepsake, too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I truly am. I must seem like a stone-hearted father to you. You're right to say I'm not worthy that Elise was able to see you as a person of sterling qualities, while I couldn't. I'm, uh, I'm a better person than this, or so I'd like to think. Father? Father, an apology from you. Don't bother. I really don't need- Yes. Yes, I'm sure you don't, son. You're far stronger than I ever could be, and I'm embarrassed to ask. But I wonder if you'd want to spend more time with your father. I don't mean in the deep realms. I mean here, with me. What a joy. What a joy. I can get to know my Aunt Elise. She and I will be fast friends, I'm sure you will. I might even learn a thing or two about fashion from her, or she from me. Yay! You're actually gonna come with us for us. Of course. Of course. I couldn't say no to my Aunt Elise. <laughs> this is so weird. Isn't he- like, he looks older than her. By a fair amount. <laughs> like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, this game. I hate time travel. Hmm, hold on. You have to stop that right now for us. I'm not going anywhere with you if you keep on with this aunt stuff. Yeah, I have a kid, but God forbid you call me aunt. <laughs> yeah, this whole thing kind of falls apart, though, when you consider the fact that Ophelia exists. So, uh... Ooh. <laughs> I'm not touching it. Not touching that. <laughs> Fair enough, Elise. Phew. Phew. I'm not ready to grow up that much just yet. Come on, wow. game. Well, you're sure about this? I'm giving up a lot to join you, Father. Yes. yes, absolutely. And I give you my solemn vow, Forrest. I'll learn to be a father worthy of you. And stop being such a prick! God damn. So that is Forrest's map. I like Forrest. He's a good unit, too. He's gonna be a really good unit here, with busted ass Leo as his dad. Now, which one do we want to do? It doesn't really make any meaningful difference. I guess strategist would be nice for the abilities. Honestly, he's about to go strategist. I, I don't need Tone Breaker. Do you see that resistance stat? This is my Tone Breaker. <laughs> this is my Tone Breaker right here. With Horse Spear on top of this, and a Tonic. Yeah, he's he's still bulkier than Forrest by a considerable amount. So here we go. Wait, what? What? <laughs> oh, I don't have to do any editing now, sweet. You guys have no idea what I'm freaking out about, but... <laughs> At any rate, he's gonna change over to a strategist, and this is one fabulous unit. I love this guy. <laughs> exactly, who knew he could be even more lovely? Who knew? Who knew? I like how he just starts with Cap Res. He's gonna have Rally Resistance, and we could drop something for inspiration. He also has Life Taker, which is kind of hilarious considering, you know, Forest, but hey. Uh, it doesn't really matter what I'll drop. We'll drop Lock Touch until the time comes for that. It'll probably be sort of useful, though. Now. Not really a whole lot else to add about him. He's just like the rest of the kids, really. He's just insanely good. And he also has a much more practical, gender-specific ability as compared to Charlotte, because most of the enemy classes are considered men. So this is basically a free plus two in just about every situation that you're counterattacking. Of course, that, that does imply that Forrest is counterattacking. Yeah, I thought his defense would be a little bit higher than that. I won't lie. I won't lie, maybe Nyx is screwing that up a little bit or something. Oh, he also got this inspiration ability. We've seen it a few times, but this is sort of the main reason I decided strategist. Just because plus two minus two ain't too bad. And it does have an aura, which makes it semi-practical. It would be a lot worse if you had to be adjacent, but seeing as to how we have that extra little bit of flexibility, I'm sure we can get some use out of this if need be. Anyways, that is going to do it for me today. So, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Next time we are going to move on to Ignatius and his supposedly hellish map. So I look forward to that if you like seeing me suffer, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, I will catch you guys in the next one. See you then. Peace. Oh yeah, like, comment, subscribe.